Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be answering the question What is a false nine? Firmino's role in Klopp's Liverpool explained. This content is brought to you in partnership with DraftKings, the best fantasy football app on the planet. If you haven't checked out the link, is in the description below, so go and do that. But anyway, it's time to talk tactics. A traditional number nine plays up against the centre backs, looking to get in behind or running the channels, but generally playing up against the defence. A false nine does the opposite. Instead of being up against the centre backs, a false nine wanders off them looking to get the ball in between the lines, before turning, looking to dribble or play a pass, a 1-2, a through ball, or just generally getting into the box before releasing a shot and scoring a goal. The first great false nine was Johan Cruyff. Under Renus Mikkels, Johan Cruyff excelled in his 1-3-3-3 as a false nine, with Peter Kreiser making runs from the wing and Neskins from midfield getting into the box. Cruyff was the chief playmaker in the side from that striking position, was gifted on the ball, could go either way, brilliant body feints and had an eye for a pass, but also was a prolific goal scorer. Throughout his time at Ajax, Johan Cruyff never managed to score less than 20 goals when he played a full season, an unbelievable talent. He was basically a centre forward that moved either left or right or dropped deep onto the ball, allowing his teammates to attack that position. He excelled in the technical skills, the speed, the acceleration and dribbling, but also the vision and the awareness of his teammates' movement. Cruyff was the first guy, the tactical brain at false nine. Under Stefan Kovac, his best performance came against Inter in the 1972 European Cup final. Cruyff scored two goals and won Ajax their second European Cup in a row. In that game, he caused the Inter Milan defence so much problems by pulling into the left channel, arguably doubling up on their right fullback. The problem for Inter was when Cruyff did pull wide, Kaiser attacked that central space, either dribbling or looking to get there before receiving a pass from one of his teammates. Alternatively, receiving in the channels and driving at the defence, Johan Cruyff, an excellent dribbler, or alternatively receiving it in the channels, using his close control and allowing someone like Neskins to take up that central position. Neskins was one of the greatest box-to-box -box midfielders of his generation, and arguably was like having two guys on the pitch, was excellent at pressurising opponents, but also tactically balancing the side with his forward runs. The big thing for Inter Milan is they could not deal with the majestic, playmaking, centre-forward, false nine extraordinaire. As a false nine, Johan Cruyff won three European Cups at Ajax and three Ballon d'Ors, excelling in the position. As mentioned before, a false nine is a very technical position. Dribbling, spatial awareness, first touch, and ability to pass crucial to this role. In terms of movement, a false nine takes up different positions based on where the ball is. In his own defensive third, a false nine will look to come off the centre-backs before linking the counter-attack. A key pass to his feet then can release wingers either side. Alternatively, in the middle third of the pitch, it's all about ball retention. A false nine overloading certain areas of the pitch, either on the left-hand side, the right-hand side, through the middle, but making it easier for his teammates to find him with the ball, but also giving them superiority and more passing options in an attacking sense. But where a false nine comes alive is, of course, in the final third, using his movement to open up space from runners from midfield. It asks a big question of the defence. Who picks up the false nine and then who picks up the runners? If it's the centre-back, then there's that space to be exploited in the central area. If you drop uh, a midfielder, let's say, onto the false nine, again, that superiority in a midfield zone is lost. And if it's the fullback, arguably 2v1s are created when a false nine laterally drifts to combine with either the left midfielder or the right midfielder. And that's the big problem of dealing with a false nine. If you track him man for man, space will be opened up in behind to be exploited by the teammates, falling into the tactical trap of a false nine. So let's move on to formations that suit false nines. Pretty much they're one-man strike forces. You don't really have a front two where it's a false nine, more of playing with maybe a track or tiste or a second striker. In terms of the 4-3-3, that's probably the best shape to exploit the false nine's tactical flexibility and ability to open up that space for his teammates. In the 4-3-3, of course, is opening up space for the midfield runners, the two outside central midfielders, but mainly from the wide forwards. In terms of the tactical setup that would be good for a false nine, arguably with the false nine in the middle, a winger on one of the sides and an inside forward making those runs in behind. The winger will keep the width in the final third, allowing the false nine to drift around, and then the inside forward can attack the space that's been vacated. Alternatively, a 4-2-3-1 could be used with a false nine, allowing the band of three behind the central striker to attack that space. Very difficult in terms of fluidity to deal with that movement. You think in Borussia Dortmund under Jurgen Klopp, or even the Manchester United team featuring Giggs, Ronaldo, Tevez and Rooney. 
The last little shape we want to talk about is the 361. A lot of midfield bodies in there that can exploit, again, the drifting and the movement of a false nine. If they pull wide, one of the attacking midfielders or central midfielders can enter that space or alternatively drop deep. That same vice versa movement, even playing a false 10, a player that plays in the natural number 10 position, but arguably plays as a target man. Maybe think Marouane Fellaini or Milinkovic Savic at Lazio. We've spoken about the great Johan Cruyff, but let's move on to some more examples of false nines. The first one that comes to mind, of course, is Lionel Messi. Pep Guardiola started Lionel Messi off at Barcelona playing as an inverted winger, but moved him centrally halfway through the first season. Pep's Barcelona used a false nine to create a central overload, basically creating a free man in midfield, giving them possession of the football. If Xavi was pressed in midfield, they would rotate positions. Xavi would drop next to Busquets, Iniesta would move into attack in midfield, joining Lionel Messi, creating a 4-2-4-0, allowing so many angles and triangles to be created by the movement of Lionel Messi. What this allowed Messi to do as well was stand in between the lines where he's most dangerous. Also, moving him from that wide position to a central area opens up a number of things. For example, the central passing lanes, the through balls, those wide players making the runs in the middle. Pedro and David Villa were very good at that. But also allows him to dribble from deep in that central area, making him a lot more dangerous. Of course, opens up opportunities to shoot as well. This was summed up perfectly in the Champions League final against Manchester United in 2011. Drifting off the centre-backs into the space in between the lines. Receiving the ball just of the right of Park, unmarked. Building momentum, driving through, Patrice Evra reacts, but doesn't get close enough to Messi, cracks a shot which arrows into the side of the goal. Lionel Messi won the Champions League that season for Barcelona with an amazing display in the final. And again, as a false nine, Manchester United centre-backs Nemanja Vidic and Rio Ferdinand just couldn't deal with the little Argentinian's movement, ability and skills on the ball. Messi's stats as a false nine were an absolute joke. 0.35 assists per game, 0.99 goals per game, and if you add those together, 1.34 goals plus assists per game, or being directly involved in a goal every 67 minutes. So we've spoke about false nines that are heavily geared to possession-based teams. We want to move on to another one that plays a bit of a hybrid on the counter-attack, but also when this team is in possession. That is Karim Benzema. The reason Ronaldo has been so successful in the Champions League over the last few seasons is down to the Frenchman's unselfish play and ability to get into the channels before creating for Ronaldo. In 38 games in the Champions League, Ronaldo of course has scored 43 goals and grabbed 12 assists. But a lot of that is to do with Karim Benzema's movement and ability to find the Portuguese legend. Karim Benzema has assisted 25 La Liga goals for Cristiano Ronaldo, more than any other Real Madrid player. Benzema is more of a lateral false nine, moving left and right instead of a vertical one moving towards the ball. This allowed Ronaldo to attack that central space. Benzema knew if that he had pulled into the channel before maybe cutting inside on the left wing, tiptoeing down the byline, Ronaldo is always going to be in that poacher's position to score the goal. Or alternatively, if Benzema got into the right channel, cut back to the penalty spot with frequent goals that Ronaldo would score. Not only was Benzema dangerous in these wide areas, but he was frequently would drop off and receive the ball to feet before playing Ronaldo into the channels. When Ronaldo is isolated with a centre-back in those wide areas in the penalty area, there's only one winner. That, of course, is Cristiano Ronaldo, because he can finish either way with his left foot or his right foot. But it's all about Benzema's movement in that build-up to pop off the centre-halves, turn and then play Ronaldo into the channels. Key to Real Madrid's play was exploiting the channels on the counter-attack, but also in possession, and Karim Benzema was a big part of that play. Now it's time to talk about Firmino's role in Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Firmino started life over in Europe at Hoffenheim, playing on the left wing, right wing, attacking midfield or as a striker. He had a decent goal and assist record but worked supremely hard. During his time at Hoffenheim he frequently topped the charts for tackles won in the opponent's half for an attacking player. We've spoke about possession-based false nines or false nines that vacate areas to open up space for their teammates. Now let's talk about the counter-attacking false nine. The interpretation for Jurgen Klopp's position in his 4-3-3. Like Lionel Messi did at Barcelona for Pep Guardiola, Firmino leads the press, arguably the first defensive line, sitting on the defensive midfielder or harrying the back four. Firmino made more tackles than any other defender from the top six sides last season apart from Cesar Aspilicueta and frequently will get into a good area in the centre of the park, allowing his teammates to mob the opponents before recovering them and then breaking quickly. In terms of the counter-attack, as we mentioned before, Firmino is the guy that links everything together. 
Liverpool's shape is a 4-3-3, but does drop to a 4-4-2 diamond, either when they're in possession or looking to break. The key part of the attack there is the first part to Firmino's feet. With his good first touch and excellent ball control, Firmino can turn in an instant, before playing the likes of Sadio Mane or Mo Salah in behind the defence. There's a lot of pace out wide and it's Firmino, the guy that's linking the attacks. Firmino's greatest performance so far for Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool came in the Champions League semi-final against Roma. It was the perfect defensive false nine display. He scored two goals, grabbed two assists, created the joint most chances on the pitch, won the most tackles for Liverpool, and completed the most dribbles again for the Redmen, and arguably could have had five assists. The movement and his ability to find that space before linking with the attackers was absolutely fantastic. Two of those chances fell to Mane. The first one being Firmino receiving it in that top of the diamond type shape, turning, flicking the ball out to Fazio, then playing a great through ball. Again, Mane firing the ball over the bar, which should have been a goal. Some more counter-attacking play resulted in Liverpool being in the Roma box. Firmino with the ball on the right-hand side. Some excellent close control, and then a cut back to Mane who fired over the bar. But again, seeing that ability to vacate the space and allowing his attacking teammates to enter the penalty area. Mane probably should have had a hat-trick against Roma, but came away with just one goal. His first assist really showed the unselfish nature of Roberto Firmino as a false nine. Again, Liverpool had attacked, Roma had won the ball, but then the Gagan press was absolutely snapped on Roma. Liverpool won the ball back in the final third before Firmino picked it up on the right wing. Again, he was making a recovery run on the right-hand side. He received the ball there. Salah was already in that striking position. Again, vacating the space. Salah being in that area. And then Salah just cut in and shot. Good goal. But about Roberto Firmino being in the right place at the right time. Being unselfish as a counter-attacking false nine. And finally, the second assist of the game. Again, created by Roberto Firmino. A Virgil van Dijk clearance. Salah knocks it inside to Firmino. A lovely touch inside around the defender. And then the through ball. Salah clean for own goal and he chipped the keeper. But what we're seeing from Roberto Firmino as a false nine for Jurgen Klopp is he becomes comes a playmaker for Mane and Salah. Interesting that we've seen playmakers play out wide, now we're seeing them in the central area again, but not as a traditional number 10, actually as a playmaking centre forward. And that's what Firmino did in that game, and that's what he's done for Liverpool so far under Jurgen Klopp. In fact, he's actually got a better record for Liverpool as a striker than any other position. As a centre forward for Liverpool, Firmino's been directly involved in 71 goals in just 78 games. And for Liverpool to progress again this season, Firmino has to be the key man. But anyway, guys, that is enough for today. What is a false nine? I hope I've answered that question. Make sure, of course, to get into the comments below and get your thoughts in about Roberto Firmino. Is he the best false nine in the modern game? Anyway, guys, I've been Statman Dave. Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you are new and check out DraftKings, a great fantasy football game. The link is in the description below. See you guys later. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out what is a Mazala or alternatively, what is a Regista? Two tactical roles explained on the Statman Dave YouTube channel.